is CNN 10, and our first report this Thursday is related to international espionage. Thank you for watching. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. The United Kingdom is kicking 23 Russian diplomats out of the country and suspending its high-level communications with Russia. British Prime Minister Theresa May says this is the single biggest expulsion of Russian diplomats in more than three decades. So why is it happening? A former Russian spy who's 66 years old and lives in Britain was poisoned on March 4th. So was his 33-year-old daughter who was with him. They were apparently exposed to a nerve agent that's made in Russia. As of last night, both victims were still alive but in critical condition at a British hospital. A police officer who tried to help them was also still hospitalized. Prime Minister May says her country has concluded that Russia is responsible for the attack. And she says the removal of the Russian diplomats, whom she described as undeclared intelligence officers, will hurt Russia's ability to gather intelligence in the UK for years to come. Russian government officials have called the accusations unfounded and said that Russia had no motive in targeting the victims. Russia also says the British government, quote, made a choice in favor of confrontation with Russia instead of completing its own investigation. The relationship between Britain and Russia has been rocky since another former Russian spy was assassinated in Britain in 2006. These latest events are likely to make matters worse. Staying in England for our next story, world-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking died at his home in Cambridge yesterday. He was born on January 8, 1942, the 300th anniversary of the death of the astronomer Galileo. Hawking was also a cosmologist, a mathematician, and an author. And while several of his theories met with skepticism or caused controversy in the scientific community, many people considered Hawking the world's greatest modern-day scientist. By any measure, Stephen Hawking's life was incredible, even more so because in the 1960s, he was diagnosed with ALS, or motor neurone disease, and given just a few years to live. This rare form of motor neuron disease left him virtually paralyzed, unable to express his profound vision of humanity and science without a voice synthesizer. At one point, I thought I would see the end of physics as we know it, but now I think the wonder of discovery will continue long after I am gone. But this was never a man bound by his own physical limitations. He reveled in a zero-gravity flight, freeing him, he said, from the confines of his wheelchair. He also wrote a series of children's books about space with his daughter Lucy. He had two other children and three grandchildren. For more than three decades, he was a professor at Cambridge University's Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics, specialising in the study of black holes and revered as a member of the academic elite. But Professor Hawking also did much to popularise science, playing himself in Star Trek in the opposite direction. <laughs> and The Simpsons. <laughs> In 2014, his life and romance with wife Jane Wilde was depicted on the big screen in the acclaimed film The Theory of Everything. So the universe getting smaller and smaller, getting denser and denser, hotter and hotter you as mean we wind back the clock. Yeah, exactly, wind back the clock. Hawking consulted on the biodrama, which earned five Academy Award nominations and a Best Actor win for Eddie Redmayne for his portrayal of the physicist. Hawking's most famous work, A Brief History of Time, remains one of the best-selling science books ever written, and he was deeply concerned with humanity's survival. I see great danger for the human race. There have been a number of times in the past when its survival has been a question of touch and go. The frequency of such occasions is likely to increase in the future. We shall need great care and judgment to negotiate them all successfully. But I'm an optimist. If we can avoid disaster for the next two centuries, our species should be safe as we spread into space. He was, as ever, looking firmly to the future. More than 3,000 walkout events were planned at schools across America yesterday, one month after a deadly shooting at a high school in southeast Florida. Students had planned to stay outside for at least 17 minutes, one minute for each of those fatally shot in Parkland. 
The two main things they wanted, stricter gun laws in the U.S. and an end to school shootings. One high school junior who participated in New York said students were all working together on the walkout, which was, quote, something we haven't seen from the adults in a very long time. At Florida's Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, students said they were overwhelmed by the nationwide support. Not all students were allowed to walk out. In several states, school districts said unauthorized walkouts would be punished by unexcused absences or suspensions. Some schools said they were concerned about student safety. And not all students who were allowed to walk out chose to. While one senior in Michigan said he supported his classmates' decision to participate, he said he didn't support those who, quote, use a tragic event to push their political agendas. A sophomore in Minnesota said the movement seemed too vague for him to get involved. In addition to the walkouts, rallies, marches, and sit-ins were also planned, and events related to the U.S. demonstrations were held in several other countries as well. 10-second trivia. Which U.S. state was named after a fictional island paradise in a 16th century Spanish novel? Arizona, Hawaii, Florida, or California? California, which became the 31st U.S. state in 1850, was named for a fictional island. And it's with a story from that state that we're kicking off a new series today on CNN 10. It's called Positive Athlete. It celebrates student athletes across the country who've overcome tough circumstances, who are making a difference in their communities, or who just have a really good attitude. If that sounds like someone you know, head to CNN.com slash Positive Athlete. There, you can nominate a Positive Athlete for the series. A great example to lead things off for us is Kendall Steer. Hi, my name is Kendall Steer. I go to South Bog Valley Christian Schools and I participate in Shop Put. My name is Madison Steer and I am Kendall's twin sister and I go to South Bog Valley Christian. I participate in the 1600 meter event in track and field. I also participate in cross country. My disability is just cerebral palsy. I was born with it. I will compete with other high school students who have a dis uh, disability similar to mine. So she gets six throws and they only let you re-strap in between the three. Yes! This is the uh, U.S. Paralympic uh, flag. Swing back. I'm hoping that one day, I, I don't know for sure, but maybe one day that I'll go to the Paralympics. My sister Madison, she's, she's uh, been in Southern Sections um, this, this past season for cross country, and she was the only person in my whole entire school to actually achieve that, and California is a big state. Kendall has won the state of California for shot put, and she's also won nationally, which is huge because it's national, it's 50 states. Everyone kind of has their, their, their own battles and their own struggles and just because mine is visible and, and, you, can, and you can see uh, my disadvantages or what is difficult for me, it doesn't mean that life's over. Kendall has a greater reach, I think, than she knows, and then she'll give herself credit for. She, all the time, we have people come up to us and say, Kendall has um, inspired me to join a sport. If you just say, oh, I'll, I'll never do this, I'm not good enough, then, then you'll always be in this state of mind where I'll, I'll never do anything, and you just have to just keep yourself in a positive mind frame. You athletes are probably familiar with the saying, there is no off season. Alvin Kamara, a running back for the New Orleans Saints, shows you exactly what that means. Here you see him working out, which isn't like most of us work out. Kamara is carrying a squat rack with four plates on it that's also tied to a Jeep that he's dragging along with him for 20 yards. I guess after doing this, carrying a defensive end is like carrying a chicken. It's not a chimerical, it's Alvin a day's workout. You don't rack up 19 touchdowns in a season by sitting on the bench. You carry the weight of the world, or at least a Jeep on your shoulders until you're in the zone of the end zone. Hashtag motivation. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10.